let's uh, do this starter. Uh, Ball's pulling a crate across the floor, but first I want to review the procedure that, that you're going to use to solve this problem. Uh, give and find and solve with a picture. Do that. Draw the free body diagram. Establish your x and y axis system. Then break up any forces into their x and y components. Using that free body diagram, look in the x direction. So add up all the forces in the x direction. Set it equal to ma in the x direction. Do the same thing in the y direction if necessary. And then you take these equations and you just solve for whatever your unknown is. And you should be able to solve some very complicated problems using that procedure. So do that with these. I have two problems here. Um, <coughs> two identical crates. They're both being pulled to the right with 100 newtons of force. But this one, it's not just being pulled to the right, but it's also pulling up with 100 newtons of force as shown at a 20 degree angle. So for both of these problems, I want to know what is the acceleration and what is the normal force. Okay, pause the video now if you're watching online. All right, so I've kind of done step one for you on both of these. So let's do step two uh, for this one. And I'm going to draw it a little bit smaller to make it fit on the paper. Um, so we've got... Uh, We've got gravity pulling it down. Now, how come it doesn't sink towards the center of the Earth? Because the ground is pushing up with a normal force. And then we've got this uh, 100 Newton applied force. I'll just call it Fa. And these are all the forces acting on my object. So I'm done with step two. Let's do step three. I'll make this my x direction and this my y direction. Now all of these forces, the normal force, the weight, and the applied force, they're already lined up with either the x or the y axis, aren't they? So do I need to break them up into components? No, they're already lined up with my x system. So I'm done with step three. Let's do step four. Let's sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. And I look at my free body diagram. And I say, what are the forces in the x direction? Well, the normal force and the weight are in the y direction. But this applied force is in the x direction. And it's the only force. So therefore, it is the net force. And it will be equal to ma. And so now I can solve for, um, now I can do step five, at least for part A. And I can say um, that the acceleration is equal to the applied force divided by the mass. I can now plug in my values, 100 newtons divided by 20 kilograms. And so the acceleration Well, what's 100 divided by 20 is 5. And a newton divided by a kilogram is a meter per second squared. Remember that a newton is defined to be a kilogram meter per second squared. So if I divide that by a kilogram, kilograms cancel, leaving meters per second squared. And that's my answer for part A. Now in part B, I want to know uh, what is the normal force? Well, the normal force is in the y direction. So let's go back to uh, step four. Sum the forces in the y direction equals ma in the y direction. And look, um, there are two forces in the y direction. There's the normal force in the positive y direction and then the weight in the uh, and it's acting down so i'll just put minus mg if i put it if i do this minus mg do not make g negative g i've already accounted for the fact that the weight is down by putting a minus here so don't put another minus in there or you're going to get the wrong answer and then i look 
Hey, MA, what is the acceleration in the y direction for this crate? Look at it. In the y direction, what is this crate doing? Nothing. It's constrained. It's not going to fly into the air. It's not going to sink into the ground. Uh, so it's zero. So since the acceleration is zero, MA is zero. Oh, what does this mean? Okay, the, then the normal force is just equal to mg. So put that on the other side, and that's 20 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. There I'm using the newtons per kilogram instead of meters per second squared. And so now the kilograms cancel, and I'm left with newtons. And 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. That's 196 newtons. So that's my answer for part B. Any questions on that? OK, now, <laughs> this problem's going to be a little bit harder. Very similar. <laughs> Let's draw the free body diagram. mg, the normal force, but now my applied force is up at an angle. And so let's, uh, so this is step two. Let's do step three. Okay, I'll make this the x direction. Let me uh, actually draw it a little bit further away. This is the x direction. This is the y direction. And it's, um, you know, just like the last problem. But now, look at, look at the applied force. The applied force is at an angle to the x uh, axis. So what I'm going to do is with dashed lines, I'm going to draw the component forces, the x and y components of that applied force. So this is Fa in the x direction. And look, that's just going to be Fa cosine theta, Fa cosine theta. And then in the y direction, this is going to be Fa sine theta. So I've taken, uh, but and, and look, the normal force and, the, and gravity are still in the y direction. They don't need to be broken up into components. Anybody follow what I did? Yes. Okay. So now for part A, um, we want to uh, find the acceleration, and the acceleration is still in the x direction. So I'll sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. That hasn't changed. But look in the x direction now. Now it's fa cosine theta equals ma. You see? Before, in this one, it was just it was just the applied force, the, the whole applied force, but now only part of the applied force is pulling it to the right. So I'm going to solve for A. I'm going to say A is equal to Fa cosine theta over M. So now the acceleration is going to be 100 newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees divided by the mass, which is 20 kilograms. I'll have to use a calculator for this. And I got 4.70. Uh, now, does that make sense? Well, over here, uh, we got 5 meters per second squared. And over here, we got a little bit less than 5 meters per second squared. Because not all of the applied force is trying to make it accelerate to the right. 
Now let's do part B. Well, we'll do the same thing. Let's add up the forces in the y direction equals ma in the y direction. Now I look at my free body diagram. I've got a normal force minus mg. But now I'm going to add fa sine theta. See, look. When I add up the forces in the y direction, I've got the normal force and I've got the weight, just like before. But now, a component of the applied force is trying to pull it up. So we have to include that in the force equation in the y direction. Does that make sense? So uh, this is going to be Fa sine theta. And again, uh, we're assuming that we're not going to be able to lift this thing off the ground. Uh, and it's not sinking into the ground, so the acceleration is zero, so that they're all going to be equal to zero. Now we just need to solve for the normal force. Well, I'm going to add mg to the other side, and I'm going to subtract the applied force times sine theta. <clears throat> now I'm going to pl plug in my values. Well, mg is um, 20 kilograms times 9.8 newtons of force per kilograms of mass. But now minus 100 newtons of force times the sine of 20 degrees. Now 20 times 9.8 is just like, oh, this is just 196 Newtons minus 100 times the sine of 20 degrees. And that's 34.2. We'll just round it off to 34 Newtons. And so now the normal force will be equal to 162 if I round it off. Newtons. Okay. Let me zoom out so we can see the whole problem here. Now, does this make sense? Um, look, if you pull to the right with all of the force, all of the forces to the right, you have a faster acceleration, and the normal force has to support all the weight. Right? For this problem. But for this problem, look at this applied force. Now, some of the applied force is pulling up, which leaves less of it to pull to the right. So I've got less force pulling it to the right, so I have less acceleration. But now the normal force, see over here, the normal force had to support all the weight. But now the normal force, see here's the weight, but what is this minus 34 newtons? This is the weight, this is the part of the weight that's being supported by the upward pull of the applied force. So therefore, the normal force doesn't have to be as big. Okay? Any questions? If you understand this thoroughly and, and how to do it, uh, if you can do this independently, you're in really good shape. Okay. That is all. <laughs>